Thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to contribute to the conversation tonight. I, I think the um, an important thing to remember is that yeah. thinking about uh, tonight's topic, which I agree was uh, about as broad a, a topic as you can pick. Uh, I tried to reflect of, on uh, wh where do we come from, our countries in in this conversation, and I think. Uh, what struck me was that every country without exception really faces challenging moments uh, in their history that, that prompt uh, serious moments of introspection and uh, political dissent and, and often uh, prompts a cha real change for the better. Uh, these kinds of moments in time are uh, often very difficult, uh, even extremely polemic, uh, and, and bring out not just the the best in us, but also often uh, the worst. Uh, and unfortunately, um, uh, that uh, at times, uh, I think we, it's hard for us to see in the moment that we're living of these difficult times, uh, what is the, what may be the positive side or the eventual positive change that results until the passage of history allows us to have some perspective. Uh, and I think the United States certainly is no exception. Um, I can rattle off any number of events and periods that illustrate it. Uh, just uh, for those of you who may have seen the movie Lincoln that just came out that was nominated for 10 Academy Awards. That movie itself uh, that d really examines the um, issue of slavery, the Civil War, and, and the fight uh, to abolish slavery once and for all through the 13th Amendment really highlights one of the most serious moments and, and darkest moments in uh, American history. And Ravi Shankar, whom we honor tonight, in fact witnessed another period of time in the late 60s. Uh, his music influenced a, a, a generation of young Americans, many of whom uh, at the time were uh, challenging American foreign policy, their government's foreign policy overseas, very vocally, uh, through their music, uh, of course, but also uh, really through uh, quite a healthy dose of uh, political dissent. And I hadn't realized until I looked into Ravi Shankar's history, the uh, lasting influence he had uh, in terms of uh, inventing the benefit concert. Uh, it was uh, in 1971, uh, he was deeply moved by the plight of the uh, refugees uh, uh, that had been affected by the cyclone and at the time a, um, the civil war in what was then East Pakistan. And he went to his friend George Harrison and out of that uh, discussion was born uh, the concert for Bangladesh and certainly uh, in the U.S. just most recently, the concert uh, to benefit Hurricane Sandy, uh, those, that was a lasting impact and a legacy of Ravi Shankar's that I, uh, I think most people may not be aware of. Uh, again, of course, I'm sure uh, everyone in the audience is familiar with the uh, demonstrations of the Tea Party and the Occupy Wall Street. Uh, we all know the Velvet and the Orange Revolutions and, uh, and then the Arab Spring. Uh, many of th these demonstrations draw international attention. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes uh, they are not always peaceful and don't always lead to uh, greater democracy. But I think uh, it's interesting in reflecting on America's history uh, in the context of tonight's topic uh, that we remind ourselves that what came before the transcendentalist movement of the early 19th century that produced Thoreau was that the very foundations of our North American colonization uh, were actually laid in, in the very beginning in, in the movement of peoples to our shores from other countries. They were unhappy with their uh, political situation <coughs> and they left their countries and came to uh, what uh, has now is now the United States, but they in those days could have expressed their dissatisfaction by leaving their country. We have nowhere to go now in the United States. We have to actually solve our problems at, at home, and so I think now uh, the 
um, the political dissent uh, is we see it reflecting the dissatisfaction or unhappiness of people but our, our, but we must recall that the roots of our country were laid in political agitation uh, our very founding uh, owes itself to the um, vision of of a number of great people who were able to uh, show a way forward that created positive lasting change and laid the foundations of our country. Uh, the decades later the transcendentalists considered the society around them to be seriously deficient and they uh, were unhappy with society's materialism like the romantics they believed in harmony with nature but going beyond them they wanted to transcend the physical plane uh, they believed that the human soul had access to divine inspiration which brought truth and knowledge and they placed an emphasis on the authority of the self and the faith in one person and an individual's own intuition uh, this gave them a new outlook on morality when Henry David Thoreau became dissatisfied with the actions of the US government he was one of the earliest Americans to really challenge the authority of a democratically elected government on moral grounds uh, he, uh, um, he, he was so unhappy with our treatment of Native Americans the Mexican War and the system of slavery that he decided not to pay taxes anymore uh, he for a short time was put in jail and uh, his family members bailed him out uh, against his will but during his lifetime he he actually did not have the broad influence that others would later have to really change the system he articulated principles of protest that became influential and as was mentioned his resistance to civil government or also known as on civil disobedience really has been enormously influential to generations we we know uh, uh, Mohandas Gandhi uh, took uh, um, influence from that as an American now working for our first African-American president uh, it's really impossible to uh, think of Thoreau, Gandhi and political dissent without also uh, reflecting on the legacy for us of Martin Luther King who uh, I'm sure you all know was also hugely influenced by Gandhi and so it's an interesting circle here uh, he uh, took Gandhi's example and really used that in an incredible way in the United States to really push the kind of um, civil mm -hmm. reform that our country desperately needed at that time uh, and uh, recently we had a visit by a Georgia congressman John Lewis uh, who uh, reflected on Martin Luther King's struggle to secure civil rights for African Americans and I think he summed it up when he said if it hadn't been for Mahatma Gandhi there would have been no Martin Luther King and if there hadn't been a Martin Luther King there would not have been a President Obama today so as we think about that we have to recognize that a fundamental part of democracy is the acceptance of political dissent and the ability to listen to our all of our citizens to accept that we don't all agree with each other but to listen respectfully to each other to uh, consider and evaluate what people have to say and to uh, make decisions based on a thoughtful analysis and when the majority decides that it is appropriate to make a change to actually make that change uh, I think it's easy to say at, at times of difficulty that we're in crisis uh, that democracy or uh, is, is, is could be failing but uh, if you look back I think there's been times at all moments of history that are very dark and difficult that it's, it's uh, normal 
to to say these kinds of things but uh, really true uh, democracies that listen and respect their people and who are fortunate to have great people amongst their citizens like the Gandhis, like the Martin Luther Kings, like the Thoreaus, uh, really do uh, ultimately look to them and, and are fortunate to, uh, to benefit from their uh, influence. Uh, that must mean I have two minutes left, correct? Uh, and uh, to really change in a meaningful way. And I was really, uh, when you go and look at how much the uh, Mahatma Gandhi had to say, uh, I, it's remarkable, it, it seems like everything he said had profound meaning. I mean, uh, you can find pages and pages of these quotes from him, that every one of which is something that you could use to guide your life. Uh, the ones that really, in, to me, uh, encapsulated the spirit of, of uh, the democracy and in, in kind of this appropriate level of, of uh, dissent was, were three. The spirit of democracy cannot be imposed from without. It has to come from within. In true democracy, every man and woman is taught to think for himself or herself. And to safeguard democracy, the people must have a keen sense of independence, self-respect, and their oneness. We may think we don't always have the tools in society, but uh, ultimately, uh, when you look at what our great uh, inspiring leaders that we are discussing tonight have done in our countries. I think that we can draw inspiration that we uh, will are, are struggling sometimes, but we are moving towards a, a better democracy and a better future for all of our people.